Calculus! This is AP Calculus Lesson 4-2. We're talking about tangent line approximations. So, we're doing some real-world problems. We're talking about Mr. Sindel's hometown to die, today. To die. Um, so, um, we talked about the tangent line used to approximate curves yesterday in 4-1. Today is the real-world application. Um, anyone want to have a beautiful voice to, to read? All of you have beautiful voices, by the way. You just need to... Get yourself out there and, and read the problem. Who wants to do it? No one? No one wants to read this amazing story about Mr. Sindel's I guess hotel? I'll do it. All right, thank you, Ben. 18 inches of snow fell on the first day of a terrible snowstorm in Mr. Sindel's hometown of Colfax, California. At the end of the first day, snow continued to fall at a rate of 12 inches per one day. Perfect. Oh, yeah, go for it. Right. Use the equation of a line tangent approximate the snow at time 1.2 days t equals 1.2 yep and I already noticed that there's a small error there it should have a parenthesis right here um, yeah so let's go ahead and analyze this problem um, if I were the AP people making the test um, I would be not giving you um, this form I would be giving you some other form um, it would look like this. So let's let's create a function. Our function, let's call it s for snow, just lowercase s. So let's write that down, s. If I plug in things into s, it will tell me how much snow there is. So um, I know how much snow there is. Uh, there happens to be at the very beginning. It tells me that there are 18 inches of snow. 18 of inches, 18 inches, and that was on the first day. So um, in math class, sometimes we turn into programmers, but in this case for not programmers, we don't start at zero for the first day. We're going to say the first day is just one. Um, so what should I be writing to make this a complete equation? S of one. Yeah, S of one is equal to 18. And this translates as, there's a function that outputs how many inches of snow. If I plug in one to represent the first day of snow, it tells me that I have 18 inches. So if that's the case, then how do I represent this last statement, at the end of the first day, snow continued to fall at a rate of 12 inches per one day. Using some sort of equation like this, how can I represent that last statement? 12t? 12t plus t. Yeah, use calculus in there. So s prime of what? Of 1 is equal to 12 like that? So you're trying to find the linear equation, which is fine. Um, that's what we're eventually going to find anyway. Um, but this is uh, a great way of just saying, yeah, um, the derivative, the rate, is 12 at time equals 1 at the end of the first day. So at the end of the first day, that's kind of open to interpretation if that's going to be 1 or like some bigger number. Maybe it should be like 0.999 because at the end of the first day, not quite at the end of the first day. So how do we turn this into an equation now? And this is kind of what Rochelle was hinting at. And by the way, we know how to turn anything into a linear line because we have that something something form that we talked about yesterday. Slope Not slope intercept. We don't like that one point in calculus. Slope. Point slope form, yeah. Point slope form again is something something something. How does it go? Y minus y one. Y minus that y one. Equals m times seventeen m. Careful. What is what goes here? X. That's what I said. Oh, sorry. And this one is going to be um, minus x one. Yeah, and we can say t here if you want that to be the day. We don't know what the input is here, but we can call it t. We can call it x. We can call it whatever we'd like. I'm just going to call it x for the sake of simplicity. But it probably would be t if you're talking about time in a real problem. Um, so what can we fill this in with then? What goes in these boxes? We know that this one should be y1, this one should be x1, this one should be m. What actually goes in them? We have all the information right here. Fill in what we know. Just shout it out. y minus 18. 12. x minus one, yep. So we have an equation, nice. 
So we have that equation. Use the equation of the line tangent to approximate the snow at time 1.2 days. Okay, and this is very similar to what we did at the tail end of yesterday's notes. So I have my equation. It's beautiful. It's nice. It's y minus 18 equals 12 times the quantity of x minus 1. I need to use that and somehow approximate 1.2. So tell me what to do. Just plug in 1.2 for t. Oh, yeah. So as you said, that should be a, a t instead of an x because I'm talking about a t here. Um, so if I change that to be a t... Um, then uh, let's go ahead and write it out. Y equals, or Y minus 18 is equal to 12 times the quantity, and this is where we're plugging in for T. This should be a T, so it's 1.2 in the place of X, or in the place of T, 1.2 minus 1. Uh, simplify this. What do you get for Y? Y minus 18 equals 6. Equals 6, yep. No, is it 6, or is it something else? Twelve over five, like that. Yeah. Yep, and that can be uh, twelve over five is a nice, easy decimal too, if you want it. Okay. Yep. It would be two point four. There it is. Yeah, two point four. Because. Oh, twenty-four. Yeah, that's another way of thinking about it. If you multiply by point two, then it's twenty-four. Move the decimal once, and you get twenty-four or two point four. Another way of thinking about it is ten over five is two, and then two over five is point four. A bunch of different ways to see that one. Um, so now I have y minus 18 is equal to 2.4, or if you prefer fractions, 12 fifths. And I like decimals because I can see that I'm going to be adding 18 to both sides. And error, what do you get for y? Um, 0.2. Mm, careful. Yes. I guess if it's melting. Oh, but okay. it's clearly not. Wouldn't it be 20.4? It's positive. Yes, Rochelle got it. 20.4? Okay. Yeah. 20.4. And again, all of this is an approximation, so I guess if I was being really technical, I would say as soon as I plugged it in, I can change these to approximations, approximations, approximations. Um, but AP creators, again, they don't really care about that technical stuff. If you write an equal sign there, you're not going to lose points. You'll be fine. Unless you do. You, you won't. Um... So there's our answer, 20.4. So I want to be able to sketch this. On the homework, you're going to be doing sketches over and over again. Let's see if you guys can sketch what's going on here. So we don't know very much about this function at all. We don't know what's happening over here. We know what happens at this position where t is equal to 1. And I guess over and over again, I'm using t, so Ben was definitely correct. Uh, this axis is t. So on this, um, on this grid, how can we represent this equation. What's going on here? Or maybe just represent this data. What can we put on here that we know? Put on the x and the y. Basically the point. Yeah, what is the point? Uh, one eighteen. So I come out to one on t, come up to eighteen, which is roughly there. Okay, so we know that's the point that we do know. It gives us that information by telling us that, that what ha 18 inches of snow on the first day. There is, on the first day, 18 inches of snow. What else do we know? We know the slope. What is the slope? 12. S yeah, the slope is 12. Yeah, so if we come back down here, I need to have a slope of 12, which is a little bit hard to do, but I can say if I go um, right 0.2, then I go up... How much? So the slope is 12. Think for, how or you can just go to zero, zero. Go to zero, zero, right here? Yeah, but how do you know it goes to zero, zero? Because it starts at zero. Zero time, zero step. If it starts at zero? If you go down so I agree that on, in the real life situation, you should go through zero, zero. But that doesn't mean that the slope at that time would go through zero, zero. At that time, it might be doing something weird, and then it goes weird like that. At this random time, that slope won't go through zero. Maybe it will, though, because <laughs> the slope is 12. And there, there is a chance. It's at, it's at 1, 12. So y will go down by 12 when x goes down by 1. How about this? For every 1 that I go, so this distance right here is 1. 
I know that I'm going to be going down 12. So if I'm up here at 18 and I go down 12, I am now at what value? Wait a minute. So there's my slope. So go ahead and make a straight line that goes through there. And I did that in red because that is the, the derivative that we're talking about now. Cool. So that's just a sketch of what's going on. But we don't know what was actually happening on the function until we read down here. All right. So between 1 and 1 1.2, so between this interval right here, it's talking about, actually, I should do parentheses because it's not equal to. Between that interval, I know that the function s for snow, the second derivative was greater than 0. What does that mean in terms of height, slope, or concavity? Concave up. That means it was concave up. So that means over here the function was concave up. I don't know if it was concave down or whatever on the left-hand side, but I definitely know in this interval it's concave up. So now we can add more to our sketch. We can say over here maybe it looked like this. Uh, I don't know. Let me do my best, my best sketch. Maybe it was going up like that and random things were happening over here. But definitely over here, I am concave up. So the concavity orange here, it was concave up. Now, this is a review from yesterday also. Approximation. Was it an under approximate or an over approximate? An underestimate or an overestimate? Do we all agree? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to say here um, underestimate. And we we're just going to say, for our reasoning, because s double prime is greater than 0. You don't even need to put the t in there. That'll be fine. And you can see that that matches up with the graph, too. And you need to be able to do those sketches for the homework. You need to be able to say, OK, well, concave up. So that's the actual graph. My blue is the actual graph. Red is my approximation. So anywhere in my approximation, or my approximation was 1.2. So this approximation right here, Obviously, that point on the red line, my approximation, is under the actual blue function. So we can all do the sketches. We're okay with that. All right. That concludes today's notes.